it's laughable that you would or anyone would describe Davos as protecting liberal democracy. It's equally, Standing up for it. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's equally laughable to use the word dictatorship at Davos and, and aim that at President Trump. In fact, I think that's absurd. But I'm going to step aside from that constructive criticism and instead answer your question. Yep. And, and I'm going to be substantive here. President Trump, if he's the next president, for that matter, I think whoever the next conservative president is going to take on the power of the elites, which I mentioned earlier. But there, the, the thing that I want to drive home here, the very reason that I'm here at Davos, is to explain to many people in this room and who are watching, with all due respect, nothing personal, but that you're part of the problem. Political elites tell the average people on three or four or five issues that the reality is X, when in fact reality is Y. Take immigration. Elites tell us that open borders and even illegal immigration are okay. The average person tells us in the United States that both rob them of the American way of life. They're right. President Trump will take that on on behalf of the average American. Elites also tell us that public safety isn't a problem in big American cities. Just travel to New York or Washington or Dallas, Texas. The average person will tell you that the lack of public safety damages not just the American way of life, but their life. President Trump will take that on. Thirdly, I guess the favorite at the World Economic Forum, is climate change. Elites tell us that we, we have this existential crisis with so-called climate change, so much so that climate alarmism is probably the greatest cause for mental health crisis in the world. The solutions, the average person know, ba based on climate change, are far worse and more harmful and cost more human lives, especially in Europe during the time that you need heating than do the problem and the problems themselves. Fourth, two more here, Robin. Okay. The fourth, China. The number one adversary, not just to the United States, but to free people on planet Earth. Not only do we at, at Davos not say that, we give the Chinese Communist Party a platform. Count on President Trump ending that nonsense. And fifth, as we sit here, another supranational organization, the World Health Organization, is discussing foisting gender ideology upon the global south. These are practices that are under review, if not being rejected, by countries in Northern Europe. The new president, especially if it's President Trump, will, as you like to say, trust the science. He will understand the basic biological reality of manhood and womanhood. And do you know why? Not because of retribution, not because he's a dictator, but because he has the power of the American people behind him. And it's connected to Senator Portman's excellent point that in addition to needing a vigorous executive, we look forward to having the popular will inform both the House and Senate in 2025 to pass laws on all of those issues and many others. Ultimately, Robin, I think President Trump, if in fact he wins a second term, is going to be inspired by the wise words of Javier Millet, who said that he was in power not to guide sheep, but to awaken lions. That's what the average American and the average free person on planet Earth wants out of leaders.